undoubtedly, the Puma is one of the most remarkable armored infantry fighting vehicle programs today. Apart from its superior technologies, it differs from its counterparts in use with its different concept. Like any newborn, the Puma has some weaknesses. Evaluations on its superiorities and weaknesses may provide us some important clues for armored infantry fighting vehicles in the future. As the weapon detective, we're investigating what the Puma tells us. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start. The Puma is the fruit of the Noya Gapanzada platform and shortly NGP project initiated by the German army in the mid 1990s. The project aimed to design a common based track vehicle which would have different models such as infantry fighting vehicle, personnel carrier and weapon carrier. The German General Stoff one of the vehicles that provides similar ballistic protection to tanks. Until those years, it was generally considered sufficient for tracked armored vehicles to be resistant to 14.5mm in front and 7.62mm armor piercing ammunition on the sides. Protection against landmines and IEDs was not on the agenda as it is today. However, it would be wrong to see the Puma as a pioneer in this field. For many years, Israel has been successfully using and modifying the chassis of the T-55 and Centrion tanks into heavy armored personnel carriers. In addition, AMRAPs had been serving for a long time, especially in the south of Africa. But until then, NATO Army's interest in such vehicles remained at an academic level. Even the US Army began to show interest in vehicles with low ballistic protection and high air transportability at the same dates due to the changing military perceptions with the end of the first Cold War. Many experts around the world advocated this new concept and many articles were published stating that active protection systems will replace passive armor. In this environment, it was really interesting that Germany decided to work on a vehicle with high ballistic protection. Yet, it was seen in the first studies that the new vehicle would have a weight between 55 and 70 tons if it remained within the specified ballistic protection criteria. Producing such a vehicle would entail huge costs. Also, although Germany didn't find the concept feasible like an unarmored armored vehicle, it agreed with the USA about the air transportability. Therefore, it was decided that the new vehicle will have a modular structure. In this way, the vehicle which would be capable of being transported by the A400M could be equipped with an additional armor in a short time and would be able to provide high ballistic protection. Within the scope of this project, two leading land system companies of Germany, Kraus Mafi Wagmann and Rheinmetall started to work together and founded a joint company. The five pre-production vehicles were delivered in 2006 for trials. According to initial plan, the serial production order was supposed to be confirmed in 2007 but was postponed to 2009 due to technical problems on its transmission and running gear. At the beginning of the program, Germany had planned to order 405 Pumas. However, technical problems were not yet overcome. For this reason, by 2012, it was decided to be delivered 10 Pumas whose availability will only be tested and improved if necessary. The first two serial production models of the Puma were delivered in 2010. With the increase in cost as a result of all these delays, Berlin decided to reduce the number of vehicles to be supplied to 350 in 2012. After eliminating some defects in the vehicle, in 2015 the Puma officially entered service with the German army. The Puma's three-man crew consists of a commander, gunner and driver. The vehicle can also carry six infantries. It has two protection levels. Protection level A is the basic vehicle which has 31.45 tons combat weight. The combat weight of the protection level C configuration is 43 tons. Puma is 7.6 meter long, 3.9 meters wide and 3.6 meter high. Thanks to the 1,088 horsepower MTU 892K501 engine, 
The vehicle can reach 70 km per hour. Its maximum road range is 600 km. The main gun, the 30mm Mark 30-2 ABM and the 5.56mm MG4 auxiliary machine gun are housed in the remote control weapon station. The basic vehicle can be transported by the A400M. In protection level A, it is frontally protected against RPGs and 30mm ammunition. In this configuration, Puma can provide all-round protection against 14.5mm ammunition. The vehicle can withstand against landmines containing explosives equivalent 10 kg of TNT. In protection level C, the vehicle is equipped with an additional armor plate weighing approximately 11.5 tons. The additional armor package can be integrated onto Puma in 3 to 4 hours in field conditions. Thanks to this package, the Puma becomes resistant to 30mm ammunition all around, while the roof armor is able to withstand artillery or mortar bomblets. Although some sources claim that Puma's front armor is resistant to 120mm ammunition, this information is unrealistic. In addition to passive protection, the vehicle is supported by the MUSS Softkill Active Protection System. This 360 degree effective system when its laser and radar warning systems detect a potential threat, makes it difficult to detect the vehicle by electro-optic sensors by launching multi-spectrum smoke grenades. It is also considered that the Puma will be equipped with a hard kill active protection system in the future. In order to reduce the infrared signature, exhaust gases are mixed with fresh air and released into the atmosphere. Also. The vehicle has a design which reduces its radar and infrared signature. The originally planned protection level B was dropped because the Puma also complies with the rail loading dimensions in protection level C. In order to have a similar mobility with the Leopard 2 main battle tanks, the Puma is equipped with an engine of approximately 1100 horsepower. Also, it is equipped with the hydro pneumatic suspensions. However, the tests show that the vehicle needs some improvement on the transmission to achieve this goal. In addition, the number of road wheels, which is 5 in pre-production models, has been increased to 6 in mass production models to increase mobility. Thanks to the independent commander's periscope, Puma has hunter-killer capability. The remote control weapon station is supported by an advanced stabilization system. The turret automatically engages itself with the target, and the gunner can fight it while the commander searches for other targets. The Mark 30-2 ABM gun can fire 30mm programmable ammunition, which offer high efficiency against the enemy troops hiding behind the walls and trenches by bursting within a determined distance. It was understood in a short time that the 5.56mm secondary gun was insufficient to provide the expected firepower. Therefore, it was decided to replace the MG4 with a 7.62mm MG5 machine gun in the future. In addition, the Spike LR anti-tank missiles will be integrated onto the Puma in the future. These missiles have an effective range of 4000 meters and can be used in fire and forget or fire and observe modes. The twin launcher spike LR is adapted to the side of the turret. The integration of the anti-tank missile onto the vehicle is expected to take up to 5 years. The Puma is the first tracked armored vehicle designed based on a new concept for Europe. For this reason, there were many difficulties in the development process and it was naturally exposed to many criticisms. The vehicle can only be transported in protection level A by A400M military transport aircraft. In standard use, three basic configuration Pumas and three protection level C kits are transported by four A400Ms. Therefore, its transportation cost is one third higher than its predecessor, the Martyr. In addition, there is the effort for disassembly and assembly of the modules. Another disadvantage that occurs in this case 
Zeta Puma in protection level A configuration can reach full combat capacity after 3 to 4 hours of operation after being transported from the air to the mission area. Delays have increased the program and unit costs well above expectations. For Germany, where military spending has brought a major political debate since the Second World War, this cost increase is more of a problem than other countries. Germany's desire to get rid of the military's appearance, which has been going on for almost 75 years, also creates some bureaucratic obstacles that are not found in many other countries. For example, according to German law, the Puma must have a design suitable for pregnant soldiers. Naturally, the first question that will come to mind is what a pregnant soldier is doing in the conflict zone or military drill. Attempting to meet such a strange criterion brings with it additional costs. Due to its innovative design, Puma is an expensive system making it difficult to find new international customers. It is also more difficult to find a country that will prefer a more expensive vehicle as it is suitable for pregnant soldiers. As the debate on whether the Puma is suitable for pregnant soldiers, a more interesting problem remains. The interior of the vehicle is suitable for soldiers only 1.84 meters tall and for crew members 1.91 meters tall. As you know, Germans are tall people in comparison to the world average. According to a study conducted in 2018, only 86% of the soldiers in the German mechanized infantry units are within the height limit that can serve in this vehicle. The same research also revealed that 2% of the current vehicle personnel wouldn't be able to work in the Puma. Already in 2013, there was a list of defects with almost 1000 positions, which showed many problems in the project. Due to the various change requests during development, there are still delays in the production of full operational readiness, even for vehicles that have already been delivered. Therefore, the Pumas are expected to become fully operational only in 2023 or 2025. The cost of all necessary retrofits is estimated at up to 4 billion euros. As a result of Berlin's effort to reduce defense spending for many years, it is known that the German army has had major problems in spare parts recently. This is a problem for a new system, such as Puma, that has not been saved from infancy. Even Germany's decision to supply 350 Puma orders with only 200 protection level C kits shows that bigger problems may be experienced in the future. As you know, the modular structure, which is based on additional armor packages, offers a great advantage as it allows a vehicle damaged in conflict environment to return to its duty in a short time. However, given the current orders, it can be seen that there will not be enough kits for a Puma to be re-equipped with a second armor package. This eliminates the advantage of the vehicle. The problems experienced in the Puma program are not a big surprise for current situation in the world. The uncertainty, budget cuts, and political complexities that had started with the end of the first Cold War also affected the fate of this vehicle. However, it was important that Germany was embarked on such an adventure at a time when a significant part of the world was pursuing a strange idea, like an unarmored armored vehicle. The time confirmed the Germans. Many important programs that have been conducted in the last 10 years are for developing vehicles over 30 tons. Today, when the second Cold War is rising, Puma has the potential to attract more countries. If it reaches more customers, the vehicle can also overcome the cost problems it is experiencing right now. Despite all the troubles, considering the inspiration he gave to many new armored vehicle programs, he wouldn't be wrong to say that the Puma is successful. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.